frustration and shame. In this series, I'll be teaching on divine escape, how you can escape the traps, spiritual traps of life, from witchcraft to ancestral powers. Divine Escape is my series. From now on, join me and get blessed. Shalom. Shout it at the top of your voice. It's a month of divine escape. Whenever you see the word divine, it means it's something that is backed up by heaven. And I looked in the dictionary as I prepared a sermon on divine escape. And I came to discover, ladies and gentlemen, that to escape is to be set free or to miss a danger. You miss a danger. You have just escaped it. You missed it. Are you following me? And today, by the grace of God, I'm starting this sermon, which we're going to run with throughout this month. And I know that there are people who are here, not by accident, but by God's incident, so that God can help you out of a trap. If you got your Bibles, Psalm number 141 and verse 10 is what we're going to deal with. As I open the sermon to help you escape. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. Yes. Whilst that I will still escape. Let the wicked fall in their own nets. Whilst that I will still escape. Let. The word let is a permissive word. Are you understanding? The wicked are not restricted to set a trap. Are you following me? So let the wicked fall in their own nets, which means the wicked got their own nets and there is a certain power that will permit them to fall in those nets. Why or me, I escape the net? Are we together? I need you to hear me that there are many nets on this planet Earth. There are many nets in this world that you and I need to work on and to escape. And I'm going to be taking you through in this so that you may understand that we live in a fallen world and this fallen world involves a lot of battles and these battles they come first of all by trapping people therefore there are many traps which you don't see with your eyes but the lord himself has seen them and he want to help us escape those traps somebody shout amen somebody shout hallelujah so the Bible says, let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape. So the wicked got nets. And the intention of their nets is not for them to fall into them. The purpose of their nets is to catch you and to catch me. I'm going to take you through the example or the story of David to show you some of the things you need to look at right now. Some of the nets are diabolical. That's why we have a number of people today who cannot move from here to there. Because they are caught in the net. Are we together? There are people who are caught into the net of anti-marriage. And no matter how much they try, they cannot enter. There are people caught into the nets of financial struggle. No matter how much they work, money cannot come. There are people caught in the nets of heal healthy. Every time they have got to be sick and spend their money on treatment and medication. There are people caught into the net of unforgiveness so that their prayers are not answered. There are people caught into nets of different kinds of things so that they may not grow and become what God wants them to be. There are people caught in the nets of a, a, a lack of promotion and lack of progress in their lives so that they may remain in the same state. 
But I believe in this month by the grace of God. Whatever need has caught you, the Lord of this house is going to set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the first thing you and me we must agree is that the wicked got nets. And the nets are spiritual and invisible. The challenge is that no one sees the nets we are talking about. But David said, let the wicked fall in their own nets while I withhold escape. So he's agreeing that the wicked got nets. But he said the nets they have must not catch me, must catch them while I escape. But if I don't escape, the nets are going to catch me. There are many people that are caught by those nets. And I can tell you, when you are in a net, you are like a fish caught in the net. When you are caught in the net, you can never take yourself out. Someone needs to take you out of the net. It's safer not to go in the net. Because when you go in the net, the process becomes long. Let me repeat. The reason why we conduct deliverance is because of the net. But today we have to pray a prayer of not getting into the net. Because when you are in the net, the process becomes longer. But when you escape the net, it's shorter. So I would rather escape the net. And David said it very clearly. Without any mercy, let the wicked, I permit them to fall in their own nets. Are you understanding? So David is saying, what you have intended for me to work against me, may it work against you. That, that's exactly what David is saying. What you have put together for me to hurt me, let it hurt the wicked because I am not meant for that. So David is decisively coming without any apology and he makes a declaration and he says let and the word let is what is a permissive statement. I permit the wicked to fall in their own nets as I permit myself to escape. And I pray for you today by the grace of God. What your father never escaped, you shall escape it. What your relative never escaped, you shall ex escape it. There are some of you here, there are people that were caught in your family and you have seen it in your eyes. Because when there is a net catching, the net can catch the whole family. That's why you can go to a family of seven. None of them is married because they are caught in the net. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Bishop, I want to be part of this ministry. I want to partner by sowing a seed in this ministry. You can see the banking details right now on the screen or you can call us and say or you can partner with us. You are there and you are saying, Bishop, I want to use your materials, the books you have written from prayer to deliverance. You can call our office and we'll be able to ship these books to you and they'll be able to help you and grow you spiritually. If you are looking for a church where you need to fellowship, we have branches around the nation. Just call the numbers appearing on the screen and you'll be directed to one near you and your life will never be the same again. God bless you and shalom. You can go in a family of five. All of them are troubled by one sickness. You know why? That sickness is a net. You can enter in a family, nobody is working. Because why? Them not working, it is what? It is a net. But I came to let somebody know that today as you came here, I want to congratulate you. You did not just come to another service. You came to escape a net by the power of the Holy Ghost. You came to escape a net in the name of Jesus. Because in this month, you shall not escape by your power, but divinity shall I shall help you to escape the net which has caught other people. Somebody shout, Lord, I am here. Shout, Lord, I am here. How many of you have heard that everyone who enter a particular office, they get sick, stroked, or die? And you hear that everyone who takes this position cannot survive. They die or they get fired. What fires them? It's a net. 
Why is it that your car is in an accident every month? Do you know why it is? It is what? A net. And the net come from the wicked side. And a lot of people say, why must I suffer a net having done anything wrong? In fact, I came to discover most of the nets come because someone desires you. You don't have to hate anybody. If you sit here as a child of God and you think the devil is going to fight you, demons are going to fight you because you have done something wrong, you are going to be destroyed. I discovered the better you are, the more dangerous it becomes. Can, can I preach to some people here? The more your life becomes brighter, the more dangerous it becomes. And I can tell you something. People who are not fighting the enemy or showing the fruits of the spirit or the results of the divinity of God, they are not attacked by the devil. That's why even the dogs, they don't bark at the standing car. Am I talking to somebody? They, they only... Do that to a car that is what that is moving. I know someone. And I need you to hear me. Robbers, they don't break in the building where there is nothing. Where there is nothing, they don't even want. You can leave it open. No one will enter there. But the reason why they put all these nets around you is because you are carrying a certain cargo. And they want to put you in one place so that you may not deliver. But I heard the Lord telling me, this is the time and the moment where every net that has caught you from your family, from your community, your work, your society, it shall be broken by the power of God. You're going to escape it in the name of Jesus. Is it anti-marriage? Is it poverty? Is it sickness? Is it premature death? Is it accidents? Whatever it may be, I say the Lord is going to take you out by the anointing in the name of the Lord. Because in this season, you got to testify. Shout, Lord, I am ready. Shout, Lord, I am ready. Now, let me show you something that will blow your mind. I read the story of David and Saul. And I came to discover David helped Saul. How many of you remember? When Saul could not defeat Goliath, for 40 days Goliath came and stood on the mountain. And he said, Israel, send me any of your soldiers to come and fight with me. Let us go into a battle. If we defeat you, you shall be our slaves. We will take your nation. Are you following me? And Saul was afraid as a king to come out and fight Goliath. Until a young boy by the name of David, a shepherd boy, who was full of the anointing of God. I don't know why when I talk to this morning, let me tell you something. You may not have the money in the pocket. You may not have a house in a suburb. You may not have any tender child of God. You may not drive the biggest car in this land. But if the oil of the Lord is upon your head, there are situations and protocols that you can shift in your life which money cannot shift shout lord i need that oil and the boy comes carrying something for his brothers and when he arrives he sees a man who is who was insulting israel and the god of israel and the boy said who is this and sat Come, size Philistine, who is defiling the name of the Lord. So, give me an opportunity. Let me try to challenge this guy. So, looked at the boy. He said, Look, you have never fought a battle. What enables you in the things of God is not experience. What enables you in the things of God is what we call the oil. When the Lord is on your side, you can do what you have never done. What you have never done before, you can do it for the first time. And you can do it so well. And you can achieve it so well. In the name of the Lord, shout power. So tell people not to scare us by their, by their experience. Don't scare me by your connections. Don't scare me by your experience. Don't tell me I cannot do it because you think you are more connected than I. I came to tell you in this journey, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout glory.
That's why you need to watch. There are people be breaking forth in this church and they are coming behind you. Right now they are behind you. But I can assure you on this journey, overtaking is allowed. For the Bible is very clear. Those who are behind, they shall be in front. And those who are in front, they shall be at the back. So don't dance too quick. Don't be arrogant too quick. Don't be pride too quick. Yes, you so more. Yeah. Because this journey overtaking is allowed. Calm down. You tell your neighbor, yes. In some of our yes. Ay, 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 ay. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, this guy, he decided to challenge Goliath and he dropped Goliath dead. Listen to this. I need you to listen to this carefully. David did a noble job. He killed Goliath. He canceled the curse and the shame over the king Saul and the whole nation of Israel. And the Philistines came under the rulership of Israel by a small boy called Dev. How many of you remember that? I'm going to show you something. Before David fought Goliath, he asked a question. What shall be done to this man who shall kill? Because... In this matter, warfare is not for free. When we fight your battles, you must reward us. When we fight your marital battles, you must reward us. When we fight your, your, your sickness battles, you must reward us. If you are not working and we pray for you and God come through for you, you must reward us. David asked, what shall be done? So he sent David into the battlefront to go and fight Philistines. The aim of Saul was for David to die. But what did David do? Nothing. David helped him to kill him. Praise the Lord. You are there and you are saying, Bishop, I need to escape. You can never experience divine escape without knowing who Jesus is. Listen to me. You have a chance now to open your heart and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you want me to help you with your salvation, call the number appearing on the screen now and I'll revert to you. Alternatively, come and fellowship with us in the city of Nelspruit or any other branch around the nation. You can call the numbers appearing on the screen and information will be at your doorstep. We love you and God bless you. Shalom. To all our viewers at home, thank you for joining us. If you would like to fellowship with us, please visit us at 12 Samora Michelle Street in the city of Mabela every Tuesday at 11 a.m., Saturday at 6 p.m., and Sunday at 8 a.m. Our ministry hosts a bookshop stocked with different books written by Bishop Dr. Alex and other reputable men of God that will help you towards your spiritual growth. For access to a vast library of digital content, visit our YouTube page, Holy Ghost Fire TV, and subscribe for free to stay up to date with the latest material from our ministry. You can also join Morning Glory on Bishop Alex's Facebook account, Bishop Alex Code, which is a time of prayer, word, and prophecy, every Monday to Saturday at 5 to 7 a.m. We look forward to fellowshipping with you.